We're moving into the fall and that means more Taylor Limiteds. Today we're going to talk to you about two limited guitars, both in the 400 series range, so stay tuned. Hey, you're watching Alamo Music TV. My name is Chris McKee. And I'm Cooper Greenberg. We're here with Alamo Music Center in San Antonio, Texas. You can find us online at alamomusic.com. If you're new to the channel, make sure you subscribe, turn on notifications, like our videos. If you want to support the channel, visit our spring store link below for custom t-shirts and check out our podcast, Fretboard Confessional, wherever you get podcasts. And we promise we will be recording more episodes. So for those of you who have mentioned it on the channel, sorry, our apologies. Uh, I've had some things going on, but we'll be recording uh, some stuff. We're so busy. Stick around for that. Uh, so today we are looking at two limited edition guitars from Taylor. They're not officially calling these fall limiteds, but I'm officially calling these fall limiteds because they're limiteds and they've come out in the fall. Taylor used to do spring limited guitars, fall limited guitars. Now they kind of seem to come in at different times of the year, uh, but whenever we can get them, very cool. This is one of the few times I've seen two limiteds of the same series. Yeah. Um, this is a 414 CE Limited, which we'll talk about the specs of. And Cooper, you have? I got the 424 CE Limited. 424, 414. If you know anything about Taylor's numbering strategy in their series, you may already have an idea of what's going on with the 424, but we'll leave you in suspense for those of you who don't and explain it in a sec. So I've got the 414 CE. This was a bit of a surprise. I knew that one was coming. And then this one became available. It's very cool. It has one of my favorite woods on the top. That, ladies and gentlemen, would be called Sinker Redwood. Ooh. Ah. Ah, yes. So Sinker Redwood, we've talked about on this channel before. I own a custom tailor with Sinker Redwood on the top. Uh, we've had a number of limiteds over the years, 800s, 900s, uh, GT811E, which was a NAM special that we thought was really, really awesome. Um, and now to have it on really one of Taylor's most affordable, well, actually it is their most affordable solid wood East Indian Rosewood guitar in the 414 CE. It changes the tonality and the response of this guitar. So with Sinker Redwood, to repeat for those that didn't watch the previous videos, shame on you, uh, it's kind of a cross between cedar and spruce. Spruce is what you see on most acoustic guitars. What would you say the response of spruce typically is? Quick and loud and bright. Yeah, it's pretty good. So go. yeah, good dynamic range. It's bright, it's loud, it's a pretty versatile top. Cedar is a softer wood, so uh, it's faster on the response. It's got a more delicate touch and, uh, and a quick response. You also get more overtones out of it when you mm -hmm. pair it with a uh, wood like rosewood that already has a lot of overtones, so you'll hear more of that. So redwood kind of sits between those. So this is going to have uh, more of a kind of quick response to a light touch than spruce will, but it has a higher dynamic range than cedar does. Cedar kind of gets tapped out early because it's a softwood, um, and spruce is not as warm as redwood is. So this kind of sits in the middle, and it's like cedar on steroids. So if you this allows you to have a lot of the benefits of cedar, but to play with a bit more strength, a bit more, you know, uh, volume and dynamic impact with your finger picking or, or your flat pick. Um, other than that, general appointments are about the same on the 414. You've got crisp white binding, East Indian rosewood back and sides. You've got a beautiful faux tortoise shell rosette. No tortoises were injured doing this, just a few faux tortoises. Um, stripey ebony. Really nice ebony. Uh, which is nice. And then this Italian acrylic uh, inlay in a pattern called Imperial. I'm a fan of imperialism, so sure, why not? Um, and then you got I don't think you're to Chrome. Uh, yeah, I'm going to get canceled now. You got Chrome uh, Taylor tuners and a beautiful uh, Paolo Abalone rosette on there. So that's your 414 CE Limited with Blackwood. Well, or uh, uh, not Blackwood, sorry, Sinker Redwood. There you go. Redwood, Blackwood, that's whatever. Same difference. Red and Black, friend of Chris. Um, <laughs> I will say that not too long ago, we had somebody email the store, say they were looking for a tailor. They played a presentation series, and they loved the Redwood and Rosewood pairing in a GA body, and they didn't want to pay for all the bling. Mm -hmm. There you go. There you go. There you and go. It's, still got, it's got some bling, we'll be Th honest. This is it, a huge value it's on awesome. a guitar. I mean, seriously. Yeah. Um, I've said this before with Limiteds, and I've said this with the exclusives that we do. The big benefit of an exclusive run of, of guitars 
or a limited run of guitars is that you get custom shop specs without custom shop pricing. So it, even if, if you went custom shop and you try to keep the bill low, yeah, and you you're still everything's an option. So you said, I want this imperial inlay because that's how I roll. And I want stripy ebony, and I want you know rosewood. Okay, keeping the price down. And then I want sinker redwood. Well, now it's more expensive, and it'd be more expensive than this guitar. So that's true. What you've about got the, a, you've what got about the blondie, piece. dude? Yeah. <laughs> the blondie over here. Um, I mean, I'm guessing that the wood pairing or the wood selection is in the title of the video, so something got spoiled already. This is a 100% urban ash guitar. That's right. Um, 424 urban ash top. Obviously, the two in the center of the model number denotes that it is not spruce. It is not a softwood. It's a hardwood. It's a hardwood. So the hardwood is urban ash. They're uh, urban sourced, which that's just really nice. Right? It is really nice. Thing. I saw the sides and went, I wonder if any of the tops will look like that. Because we shall see. Um, but yeah, so Taylor, as we've seen in certain models, like the 324 Builders, GT Urban Ash, other things here and there. Um, they've been used in Urban Ash. I think it's been pretty successful. Custom shop that we just got. That's true. We do have a beautiful GP with Urban Ash back and sides. Um, my theory of why they did this is to give a really good example of this is how it sounds, Urban Ash, because there's not a ton of reference. I mean, yeah. you can play those guitars with spruce tops, whatever. This is all Urban Ash. Pretty straightforward 300 series uh, appointments. Otherwise, 400 series. 400 series, that's what I meant. Um, what is the name of that? Renaissance. Anyway? Renaissance. So it's like the, the Imperial Renaissance. The Renaissance led to the Imperial. Yeah. <laughs> Long live the king, am I right, guys? Um, and the satin black tuners. Yeah, it cool. is, uh, I think it's paired nicely. It's interesting because you got the crisp white, mm -hmm. typical for a 400 series guitar. Not the black, but you got to have black with as bright of yeah know, it, it contrasts that, it very not, nicely frames it real, not work real well. but with the satin black tuners um and obviously ebony that is not as stripy as the one that you've got there mm -hmm. but um pitch black ebony it all kind of frames this really blonde wood in a nice way and you know you might have looked at this thought that it was spruce on top but really looking it up close it does not look anything like spruce um and it looks really nice and it sounds very interesting and so if anything it is a little um, demo of what Urban Ash really is and what it actually sounds like because you know they stain it sometimes and people think that they it's mahogany it most, or something. They stain it most know. of the time for Taylor. Um, I like this blonde look. When I took it out of the case my son uh, Lucas was like whoa I really like that. Yeah. Um, it's a JR guitar. Yeah I think it is. Yeah, yeah. JR loves his, his natural finished blonde guitars. Um, I think it's going to be somewhat polarizing. I think some people are going to go yeah I really like that <laughs> entire blonde look which is something that another guitar of ours that we'll be reviewing on this channel also shares from a different manufacturer. Um, yeah, just over there. Um, but uh, this, the tone is really interesting on this. So here's the thing. This is an all Urban Ash guitar, and if you've been paying attention to our videos or you've read some of the stuff that Taylor has put out, how have they described Urban Ash? In a lot of ways that confuse me sometimes. I mean, I think that I think it's somewhat mahogany-esque. Yeah, you know? they, they've actually described it as sounding like some of the best like sets of mahogany, like a really good set of mahogany. And, uh, and that's high praise. And it's interesting that they used it on that custom shop Grand Pacific we have that is very similar to a J45. Kind of, you could tell it was inspired by you know something like that. <clears throat> and I think the tone really works with it. Um, on a lot of the guitars I've played, the notes of it have been certainly very much like mahogany. And here's where I'm, I'm going to just kind of put this out there. We got the sheet on this guitar when they were made available, all urban ash. Mm -hmm. And so the description of it was it's going to be very much like an all mahogany guitar. And that's, that's half right. It's half truth. Um, it is a lot like an all mahogany guitar, but it's more forward sounding. Yeah. You know, we talk about hardwood tops, whether it's a koa top or if it's a mahogany top, it has this compression factor. It records really, really well because the dynamic range of the guitar is compressed. And we just, we typically kind of leave it at that. And I've been fine to say it like that for years. 
And playing this guitar was the first time that I really kind of went, you know what, that's not the whole story. Yeah. Because if you've ever done any recording, or if you've got a compression pedal on a pedal board with an electric guitar, you know that compression is not just a one size fits all or a one trick pony or a, or a one dimensional adjustment. Mm -hmm. You can adjust compression along multiple bands of equalization. You can compress the high end or you can, and in fact, that's what's going on in guitar design. When you hear more high end in the guitar or more low end in the guitar, effectively what's happening is certain frequencies are being compressed dynamically and they're not as present. Hardwood top guitars kind of even everything out, but they don't do it all the same. Koa does it differently than mahogany, mm -hmm. and Urban Ash does it differently than, than mahogany or Koa in that it's, it's a little bit more forward sounding. So you've got that warmth and you've got that compression, but the way I, I kind of, we talked about this with singers once upon a time with a different guitar. It's almost like some singers, their voice is just kind of here. You know, Chris Stapleton's amazing pipes, when he sings, he's not really belting it out. He's just kind of here, he's always comfortable. Mm -hmm. And then you see someone else <laughs> belt it out and they gotta pull the mic back, right? Because it's a much more forward sound. And that's how this guitar hits me. So you've got that compression, but it's it's out here, whereas on a mahogany guitar, it's kind yeah. of sitting right here. I, I think you're right. Um, yeah, super interesting. I want to hear you play them. All right, I'm going to play them, so put on your best ears and listen.
So you can take your good ears off and put your normal ears back on because we're back. Hopefully you heard some dramatically distinct differences between these two guitars because despite having the same series number of 400, they are very, very different guitars. Um, I had a, this idea of a great metaphor for these. That's Mr. Sensitive, okay? It's, it's, he's, he's the, the softy that sounds really, really great, right? And, uh, Me. and this is the strong silent type then that when he you know when he comes forward uh, is very loud and boisterous you know um, I don't know if that's a good metaphor but anyways very very different guitars yeah this is a unique sound to it and I, I like it it's I cool. think it's gonna be polarizing just like the looks of it yeah I think so but um, Taylor makes it pretty hard on Taylor collectors because they're always doing something that's pretty unique from anything they've ever done gotta have it you gotta keep collecting yeah um, Here's a question for you. Mm -hmm. Why do you think they made that a 400 limited instead of a 300 limited? Good question, because Urban Ash is already in, well, M Urban Ash was in the 300 series. Now it's mahogany, mm -hmm. except on the Builder's Edition. Yeah, it's a good question. Um, it's I got black binding. I think. It's got satin black tuners. It's got a mahogany-esque wood on the top and back and sides. Honestly, I think it's for uh, the inlay and the pricing, right? If you wanted to price something a certain way and you wanted to use this inlay that's already on the 400 series, you could make it a 400 series, you know? Yeah. It's a limited that has a different tone wood combination than anything else in their lineup, so they could have called it anything. Here's a question for you. When you think 400 series, mm -hmm. if you are going to pick one spec to be like, that is what the 400 series is, is it going to be the back and sides wood? Is it going to be the inlay? Is it going to be the finish? What's, what defines 400 Gosh, feet? that's such a good question. Okay, so Diving here, in. Here's the thing. I just had this conversation with Casey Jones. Okay? So this is a good conversation. And, and I will say this too, because by the time this video comes out, the other video will have already come out. They couldn't call this a 500 series, because those just came out. And hopefully you saw that video. And if you haven't, you need to go see that video on the new 514 and the new 512 using a strong, muscular iron bark wood. Um, so they couldn't call it that, but what makes a 400 series a 400 series? For years, the 400 series was, if you go back a long way, prior to the 2000s, so back in the 90s, the 400 series was the lowest price entry level US made hmm. Taylor. Then it became the 300 series. The 400 <coughs> series was Ovencol for years, um, and now it's really not. Now it's become a lower priced Rosewood model, which is great. I like Oven Call. I think it's underrated. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't get the respect it deserves, but Rosewood's fantastic, and now you've got it you know, at a really, really competitive price point. But the question is, what does it, what makes it a 400 series? And I think with Taylor, uh, and I've talked to JR about this. Taylor was really predictable for a long, long time on their series. A 300 series had these tone woods and this aesthetic choice, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then a 400 series, same thing. A 500 series, same thing, so on and so forth. And it's no longer like that. Look, at an 800 series, an 814 and an 812 have the exact same aesthetic appointments and the same wood combinations. And then an 816 is completely different mm -hmm. as a builder's edition models. And, then, and an 818 is completely different as its own thing. In the 600 series, it's the same thing going on. A 614 and a 612 have the same aesthetic choices, and then you have a 618 sitting there. You know, and, and they're no longer, um, as, as of right now, making sure that every single body shape is represented in every single series, nor making sure that they're committing to a particular tone wood in a series or a particular aesthetic choice mm -hmm. within a series. And I think it comes down to this. Andy, as a designed, uh, you know, CEO of the company now, and the master guitar builder is looking at things as individual guitars and not as series. Mm -hmm. And so I don't think we can really say anymore, this is what makes a 500 series or this is what makes a 400 series. You can't say that right now. A, a 700 series is either going to be a satin finished, torrified, spruce and rosewood Grand Pacific Builders Edition or two guitars that are completely Koa. Yeah. And... I think from a marketing standpoint, that's difficult, more difficult than the very easy you know, way it was before. Mm -hmm. But coming at it from, there's a builder involved in designing these guitars, I get it. 
Yeah. Because he doesn't really care if like it's easy from a marketing standpoint. So, you know, it's an interesting thing because mm -hmm. I think a lot of companies for years saw that Taylor did that and, and were like, oh, yeah, that makes sense. But think about Martin. Or Gibson, right? For you, Martin's the lineup hasn't really made cohesive sense. It's like mm -hmm. you have some uh, cohesion where it looks like a 28 series mm -hmm. or a 35 series, but outside of that, it largely starts to fall apart. Um, like a standard series is a standard series, but a 16's not in there, and a 17, but an 18 is. But you know, it's like it doesn't really yeah. make sense, and that's okay because the guitars are great. Gibson hasn't worried about that like ever. Yeah. You know, the guitars just are what they are. And so I think that's what's going on here. The guitars are what they are. That's a good answer. So we, what we do, Sorry I asked. Yeah. No. <laughs> well, what, we, what is still consistent is uh, some information within this naming thing. So when I said yeah. 424, you know, if you, if you know, this could be called a 624. It's going to say it's got a hardwood top on it. Yeah. Yeah. Hardwood top, Grand Auditorium, that's all you need to know. With cutaway and electronics. Yep. Well, they're both cool. Obviously, now you got to pick which one you would take. Personally, I'd probably take the the Redwood. Yeah. Um, and well, I already own a Redwood guitar, and I tend to play more finger style. And if I want to play with a pick, I tend to play lighter anyway. And it will handle pretty good strumming. And yeah. I like the darkness. I'd probably take that. However, if I wanted a recording guitar, I'd probably pick this. This is this is so balanced. Yeah. And, and just, you know, you can lay into it or you can flub, if we're being honest. Like, you can mess up and it's not going to be that noticeable dynamically because yeah. it's all kind of yeah. happy and compressed. It's happy guitar. It's a happy guitar. It looks really cool. Yeah. Yeah, it's nice. It's like a white tuxedo. The sides, uh, <laughs> sides make me really love it. Yeah, I, I would love to see that on more stuff. And it, it's an interesting choice to go with uh, non-stained... Mm -hmm. Urban Ash, because it means that all, you know, it's, it's a communication that all their other Urban Ash is stained for a particular aesthetic. Yeah. And I wonder, I wonder if they'll do this some more in, in some other things. We'll so. see. I think it'd be cool. I think that if you did a blind test, you probably might not be guessing Urban Ash as your first thing of what it is. Yep. But it's a nice way of proving this wood is not just a marketing thing or right. an experiment. It's here to stay. It works really well. It's got a unique sound. Is it workable? Does it sound good? Is it in good supply? Can we get it? Those are the choices. And if those Guitars. four things are yes, it's a Use good it. tone wood. Yeah. It's good for me. Is it exotic and weird? And did someone have to climb a mountain in, you know, a robe 500 feet carrying a flower to get it? Doesn't matter. Yes. <laughs> Doesn't matter. It's a League of Shadows uh, <laughs> signature. <laughs> Yeah. Anyways, so very cool limited editions. Now, here's where the PSA comes into play. We always say this with limited editions. They're limited editions. So if you're seeing this video six months from now, there's a good chance they're all gone. You can take a shot and see if we have any more in stock. If we don't and no one else does, that means they're gone. Um, you know, and so you might be able to get one used. That's how it goes. That's why they're limited editions. So if you like this video you just saw and you want one, you better act now because we got, I think, five of those and we got... A bit more of these, like, but less than 10, I know less that. Less than 10 on both. So, yeah. So, there you go. Um, and if you like this video, uh, you know what you should do. You should hit the thumbs up, and you should subscribe, and you should tell everybody else about it. And, uh, mm -hmm. yeah, keep coming back for more. At the end of the day, the best guitar in the world is the one you're playing. Keep playing. We'll see you next time. <laughs>